As you heard from the video and from Connie, we're a purpose-driven investment organization. We have a commitment to future-proof companies and make a positive impact with everything we do. That's really our purpose and has been at the core of EQT since day one. Our vision is to be the most reputable investor and owner. Uh, and at the core, our mission also since day one has been to drive strong long-term returns for our investors in a responsible way. We have a, a differentiated sustainable investment approach. It's really based on a, a thematic and sector-based approach, finding long-term secular trends that we invest behind. Uh, we have a clear governance model uh, and a set of advisors from around the world that help us in all facets of our business. We've also institutionalized our approach to value creation in the private market through our house of value creation. Uh, and as part of that, we've also really developed a, a unique approach to sustainability that's weaved into everything we do, as well as digitalization. And both of those are really driven to drive transformation of companies. Uh, underpinning this uh, is a unique culture, uh, and that's really at the core. And like Connie said, it's all about the people and it's all about the culture in our firm. Now, our business model is long term uh, and it's relatively simple and also quite scalable. Uh, and it's really based on at the, at the core of generating strong returns uh, for our LPs. Uh, those returns enable us to continue to develop and drive EQT and grow our assets under management. And with the assets under management, uh, that generates you know, long-term management fees, uh, as well as performance fees in carry and investment income. Uh, on the cost side, it's relatively predictable. It's consisting of people and costs relating to those people, like travel and offices, etc. Looking at 2019, that was a record year for us. Uh, we celebrated 25 years of our history and um, of transforming companies. Uh, we went public on the NASDAQ, uh, as we know, and that's why we're here and having this uh, shareholders meeting. And that was important because it really strengthened our balance sheet and strengthened the backbone of the firm for the long term. Uh, parallel with that, we founded the EQT Foundation, uh, which is going to, to drive and support our philanthropic initiatives. Uh, from a financial point of view, 2019 was a very strong year. You can see here in the various bullets, um, uh, you know, our, our, our facts and statistics of uh, how we performed last year. Uh, looking to the investment side, also a strong year in 2019. We invested uh, 8 billion, sorry, we had 8 billion euros in exits across uh, our investment strategies and we invested about 12 billion euros uh, in new investments also across all strategies. We, uh, and in those strategies, we really strengthened our positions in core sectors like healthcare, TMT with fiber, software, and other technology investments. So really driving long-term attractive investments in our view. We also uh, importantly, formalize our statement of purpose. Like I said, we've been purpose-driven since day one, but actually we've really now formalized our statement of purpose in a document that's signed by the board of directors and myself. Uh, and today we also are asking the shareholders to approve uh, that we make an adjustment to our, our articles of association, which also will include our purpose of future-proofing companies and making a positive impact. Uh, we also set new and clear targets for EQT in terms of our societal ambitions. Uh, with regards to transparency and accountability, diversity and upskilling, and also clean and conscious relating to the environment, all in line with the, with the SDGs. Uh, and I think this is quite important actually these days where we see uh, a lot of unrest in the world, both with the pandemic and with discrimination and violence happening. So uh, we want to take our responsibility and, and help make the world a better place. And that takes you to, to sustainability. Sustainability actually really is integrated into everything that we do, uh, although we're continuing to do even more here. Uh, on the deal sourcing side, we're trying to find companies that are sustainable or can become more sustainable during our ownership. Uh, in the transformation or ownership phase, we're weaving you know, sustainability and into everything that we do to drive value creation uh, and to strengthen that. And uh, the, the, we typically say that if you have two companies that are exactly the same and one is or can be more sustainable than the other, which one of those is going to you know, create the most value? Which one of those is going to be the best company over the long term? And we believe it's, it's the one that can or is more, can become more sustainable or is more sustainable. 
Uh, and on the exit side, this also helps position the company for the future and back to future proofing. So that's how it works in the life cycle. Uh, looking at the COVID-19 situation on EQT, uh, we were certainly impacted like everyone else, and we've all been uh, working from home for a long time. Uh, our offices are starting to open up in some jurisdictions, uh, and, but and we're relatively well positioned, uh, you know, given our thematic investment approach. Uh, the portfolio is fairly robust. Uh, we were also well prepared for the downturn, uh, and we have plenty of ca fund capital available to support the companies. Although we do believe that fun, you know, value creation will take longer. If you look at our portfolio now, uh, as we said earlier, uh, less than 10% of the portfolio is in the most affected sectors, such as travel, leisure, oil and gas, and retail. Uh, on the EQT side, on the left side here, uh, given that we now have a strong balance sheet, we have our recurring revenue base, uh, we have a really strong team and strong culture, we're pretty robust uh, in this uh, crisis. But we are also impacted, so you know the investment pace will be slower, exit activity will be slower, um, and also fund fundraising will take more meetings and more time. Um, but we are working well on that also. Looking to strategy, our strategy remains unchanged. Uh, on the left-hand side here, people and performance, uh, we want to continue to stay ahead on culture and people development. That's at the core of everything we do. Future-proofing as well, thematic investing, digitalization, sustainability, weaving that in, uh, and also driving growth. Uh, and on growth, uh, we have talked about and, and are going to continue to pursue our expansion in Asia-Pacific, uh, developing a new strategy within growth investing between venture capital and private capital, uh, developing and growing our real estate business, and also selectively looking at M&A opportunities. And finally then, coming to our financial targets, these uh, remain unchanged, uh, and therefore I, I just want to reiterate them, uh, that our total revenue growth shall exceed the private equity market's long-term growth rate. Uh, our profitability over time will be, uh, uh, the target is to be with an adjusted EBITDA margin of 55 to 65%, and our dividend policy is to generate a steadily increasing annual dividend in absolute euro-denominated terms. Uh, and to note that these targets should be considered over a fund cycle. 